Hello students and welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Shefali Nagpal from Bhagat Pool Singh Mahila Vishwithyale. Today we are going to talk on the module External Business Environment Part 2 under the paper International Business Operations. After completing this module, you will be able to understand the various components of the external business environment faced by the global companies and how they impact the business. To know about the cultural, political, legal and regulatory components of the environment. In the previous module, we have explained some of the components of international business environment. There are some more components of the same that is external business environment which have lot of influence on the success and operations of the business in the overseas markets. The important components are socio-cultural, political and legal environments. While there is lot of intermingling between these components, they are distinct in nature. They have an overt influence on the business operations and the business need to understand them and adapt according to the overt influences of these environmental components. Cultural environment. The term culture originated in 18th and 19th centuries in Europe and has been acquiring different connotations, each representing a different perspective. This agriculture, anthropology, sociology, philosophy, psychology, etc. Etymologically, it refers to the cultivation of the soul as the philosophers accommodated a wider and practical perspective to life, accommodating other existential aspects. Culture acquired a different meaning and is used to refer to all the ways in which the Humans overcome their original barbarism through artifice and become fully human. This is the set of the shared values of a society. It encompasses religion, language, custom, traditions and beliefs, tastes and preferences, social stratification and social institutions, buying and consumption habits and similar kind of the factors. The study of culture is the study of all aspects of the society. It is the language, knowledge, laws and customs that give society its distinctive character and personality. In the context of consumer behavior, culture is defined as the some total of the learned beliefs, values and customs that serve to regulate the consumer behavior of members of a particular society. Beliefs and values are guides of the consumer behavior. Customs are unusual and accepted way of behaving in the society. The impact of culture is so natural and ingrained that its influence on behavior is rarely noted. Yet culture offers order, direction and guidance to the members of the society in all phases of human problem solving. Culture is dynamic and gradually and continually evolves to meet the needs of the society. Culture is learned as a part of social experience. Children acquire from their environment a set of beliefs, values and customs that constitute culture. They are cultured. These are acquired through formal learning, informal learning and technical learning. Advertising enhances formal learning by reinforcing desired modes of behavior and expectations. It enhances informal 
learning by providing models for behavior. Culture is also communicated to the members of the society through a common language and also through commonly shared symbols. Because the human mind has the ability to absorb and process symbolic communication, marketers can successfully promote both tangible as well as intangible products and product concepts to the consumers through the mass media and nowadays through various electronic medias. Let us also study how the culture impact on business and individual decision making. Culture has several interfaces where it influences the business and has impact at the macro level as well as at the individual level. Some of the macro level impacts of culture are discussed below. One is decision making. In some societies, all important organizational decisions are made by the top management, while in others, the decisions are diffused throughout the organization. For example, the decision making is highly decentralized in Japanese firm while it is highly centralized in American firms. There are cultural reasons behind this. Risk evasiveness. The decision makers in some organizations are averse to risk, while some take risk and thus make higher gains. The risk-bearing behavior of groups is also a cultural phenomenon. This influences investment decisions at the organizational levels and at the micro level of the consumers. It has its impact on the buying habit of the consumers also. People who take risk buy new and innovative products, while on the other hand, the others prefer to stick to the tested products and sometimes they are commonly called legards. Individual versus the group reward. In some societies such as Japanese, the group reward is valued more than the individual reward, which is the order in the American firms. Then other is organizational loyalty. Extrapolating the above point, the societies with stronger interpersonal ties have a high degree of organizational loyalty, while those who value individual achievements have low organizational loyalties. Another aspect of the culture is culture and perception. Culture has a great bearing on how people view themselves as well as their surroundings, which influences their behavior as well. The cultural impact of perception influences the sense of self-gratification, empathy and organizational commitment. There are also the impacts on the individual. Besides the macro level impacts which we discussed above, culture also has an impact at the level of individuals as well. Culture influences the sense of self and space, communication and language, dress and appearance, food and feeding habits, time consciousness, beliefs and norms, customs and rituals, mannerisms and etiquettes, and many more. As a part of culture, there also exists a subcomponent known as subculture within the broadly defined culture there are several subcultures which assert a similar influence on the business a subculture is a variant of the culture while it shares value and beliefs with the culture it does modify it according to the specific requirement of the group for example although the people all over India 
share common values, celebrate common festivals, and possess similar religious beliefs. Still, there are several variations at the local level. Hindus of Northern India would follow different rituals from those in the Eastern India or Southern India. The marketer must understand the subculture as well while adapting to the local conditions. To sum up, we understand about the culture that it is very important for the success in the overseas marketing. Although the world is becoming global and there is high degree of culture diffusion, still there is a need to adapt to the local environment of which culture is one of the most important constituent. Culture and international marketing. Culture has lot of impact on the international as the marketing mix has to be designed according to the cultural characteristics of the population of the host country. For example, when McDonald launched their burger into Indian markets, they introduced the products which had stronger and pricier states to suit the taste buds of the Indian consumer. They did not introduce any varieties of burgers which used beef as its would have hurt the sentiments of the majority of the Indian population. Similarly, culture influences the communication patterns and styles and the marketing communication campaigns have to be designed accordingly. For example, Pepsi has a very popular slogan come alive with Pepsi generation. When Pepsi used the same slogan in China, it translated as Pepsi will bring your ancestors from the dead. This slogan created lot of negative publicity and it had to be withdrawn. Similarly, a baby food manufacturer had to change its brand name from Gerber because in French it means to vomit. Kellogg could not have succeeded in the Indian market to the extent to which it has anticipated because cereals are not preferred breakfast food here. So they had to target specific consumer segments such as children, women, etc. The above examples discussed show how firms can make big mistakes when they do not understand the local culture and introduce their products into the foreign markets. So, the mantra for the success into the overseas market is think global, act local. It means that while firm must have a vision to grow into a global company, they must act according to the culture, taste and preferences of the local market. Such an understanding will help them to be successful into the international markets. Another component which plays a crucial role is the political environment. As a firm ventures abroad, it has to deal with various countries, each having its own political setup. Some of these components of the political environment are political systems. After the disintegration, disintegration of United States of Russia, the communist or the socialist form of government is not working in many countries. But the impact of socialism on the thinking of the people and political star class is still not cannot be thrown away. There are countries like pa Pakistan which follow dictatorship style of government while most countries in the Europe and North America follow democracy. Even the democracy has various forms such as presidential form as prevalent in USA and the parliamentary form of government as in UK and India. Some countries in the Middle East have a typical thesis 
political setup. While others are secular countries, there has been lot of changes in the Arab world where people have come forward and asserted themselves to switch over to democracy. The form of government has direct impact on business because each form of government has its own typical set of policies, programs and priorities. These have an impact on the regulatory mechanism of the countries and the business has to comply with the laws of that land. Another subfactor is political instability. Despite diverse political system, no system is bad if it works in a stable manner. The biggest problem arises when there is political instability. Some of the examples of political instability are widespread public protest have changed the dictatorial forms of government in Egypt and Libya. There is a bloody battle going on in the Syria for the change of the government. Pakistan had a military coup and then a democracy controlled by the military dictator. Afghanistan was under the rule of fundamentalist Taliban and there is elected government now. Situation was drastically changed if US withdraws its army from the Iraq had seen a change in the regime enforced by America. There were the coups and genocides in Syria, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Congo and many other African countries. In each of the examples which we have discussed above, we find an element of uncertainty. The form of government change and so do the nature of doing business within that country. For a firm aspiring to market its product abroad, it has to carefully study the types of political system and the stability. In the countries which are politically unstable, the business takes <clears throat> extra protective measures and restrict its operation to exporting or joint ventures. However, in the countries with high political stability, the business makes direct investments. China has attracted maximum foreign direct investment because of the stable pro-business attitude of the government. Despite being socialist state, China has transformed itself to the need of the time and has opened up its economy at fast rate. On other hand, the ghost of regulatory setup of the yesteryears continues to haunt India and we see less investment here. Even within the country India, we see lesser investment in the states such as Kerala, West Bengal because the leftist parties have been in power. Another external factor that contributes to the external business environment which the organization must consider is political risk. It is considered to be one of the most crucial and important external environmental factor. Although often correlated Political instability and political risk do not go together always. In the examples of political instability mentioned above, we find that although the government have changed in Italy, Japan and India, the basic national character did not undergo any major changes. Nor was a change in the policies and business had a sense of continuity and security while doing business in these countries. However, the war in the Afghanistan and Iraq has had a tremendous impact on the businesses there. Not many companies are taking the initiative of doing business in these countries. They would rather prefer to wait till normalcy returns back to 
such countries. Political risk is more associated with the uncertainty and unpredictability of the political parties in power in the country. Basically, political risk depend on two factors, willingness and the ability of the government to keep the situation under control. Now, let us see the assessment of the political risk. Marketeers need to understand and assess the political risks while there are several approaches to do so. Sundaram and Black have summarized the analysis of the political risk in the form of the following points. Let us discuss those points. In step number one, they have given to determine the critical economic or business issues relevant to the firm. In this, they have pointed out to assess the relative importance of these issues. In step number two, they have highlighted to determine the relevant political events that takes place in the society or the country and to determine the probability of occurring, also to determine the cause and effect relationship and to determine the government's ability and willingness to respond to certain events. In step number three, for assessing the political risk, they describe to determine the initial impact of the probable scenarios, to determine the possible responses to the initial impacts, determine the initial and ultimate political risks. As a part of external environment, the legal and regulatory environment plays a dominant role in establishing or going international or expanding the international business in the foreign markets. The marketeers must carefully study the legal and the regulatory system prevalent in the countries to avoid the situations that might result in conflict, understanding or misunderstanding or outright violations of the laws of the foreign country. Some of the important aspects worth consideration is in the legal and the regulatory environment are discussed as below. The one of the component is international law. International law has existed since the 16th century, although it has undergone a change in the form over the passage of years. The international bodies such as United Nations, World Trade Organization and other regional groupings have been instrumental in developing the international rules and regulations. These international laws are ratified by the participating countries and are binding in nature. Hence, the business must understand them correctly to ensure the compliance of such legal laws and rules of the foreign country. Conflict of laws. While doing the business across the nations, there can arise multiple situations when the laws of the two or more than two countries can be conflicting. The businessmen must study these laws and take measures to avoid being caught in such a situation. For example, most of the countries of Middle East want that the goods should be dispatched to them only in those ships which do not go to Israel ports. They ask for the certificate from the shipping line in this regard as well. If an exporter ignores this law, he can be in a very difficult situation and can incur heavy losses also. Another factor is freedom of contracts. In developed countries and those which have very sound legal system, the principles of contract are taken for granted and are strictly enforced by the law. However, in some other countries, the government interferes with these principles and can cause 
a loss to the businessman. One should be vigilant, especially while participating in the global tenders or the project of long gestation periods. Patents and trademarks. Another important issue for a multinational corporation is the protection of its patents, trademarks, and the intellectual property, which is becoming and is increasingly becoming more important across the globe. Most companies invest heavily in research and development. However, unscrupulous manufacturers of some developing countries take the advantage of the difference in the patent laws and manufacture a duplicate of the product, causing a heavy loss to the original manufacturer. The companies which has invested heavily in the research and development must analyze these situations and take protective measures. The issue has been addressed by the World Trade Organization, which has instituted TRIPS, that is, Trade Related Intellectual Property Rights Mechanism to avoid loss to the original manufacturers. Conflict resolution. It is very difficult to achieve an ideal situation when there is no conflict between the trading partners. Conflict do happen, but there has to be a sound system of resolution of the conflicts. There are set of the principles laid down for international arbitration. The businessman must be aware of these and carefully analyze the devotion of the partners towards implementing them. Beside arbitration, there are alternative mechanisms of dispute resolution developed by the international bodies. Some of the international bodies which have instituted mechanisms for the international arbitrations are ICC, that is International Chamber of Commerce, American Arbitration Association, which is notated by AAA, Inter-American Commercial Arbitration Commission, International Center of Settlement of Investment Disputes, Swedish Arbitration Institute, United Nations Conference on International Trade Laws. Recourse. In case of legal action, the operation of law can be very lengthy and costly procedure in many countries. If a country engages in long legal disputes in a country, it tarnishes its image. Beside incurring the losses of time, money and efforts, there also exist the tariff mechanisms to control and regulate the international business. The tariff and taxation structure of the foreign countries must be clear to the business to avoid complications at a later stage. Although the tariff structures are being standardized across the nations, still there exist differences and these must be carefully studied. Equity control. Different countries have different laws regarding equity participation of the foreign partner. Some might allow 100% foreign direct investment in some sectors, while there might be limits on investment altogether. Some countries make the participation of the domestic partner obligatory. Such different situations must be carefully studied before taking any investment decision. Documentation and formalities. While most countries are dismantling the tariff barriers, they are yet to make the procedures more easy and user-friendly. It is notable that China's economic success story has a lot to do with the ease of doing business there. There is a little red tapism and most of the regulatory requirements are cleared speedily. On the other hand, business has to run from pillar to post 
to get approvals and essential registrations for doing businesses in India. A thorough knowledge of the prevailing system is very essential for the success in any foreign country. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. The business is a part and parcel of the social system and is influenced by the several forces. In order to be successful, an understanding of the culture is essential, particularly if the marketeer wants to venture out his national boundaries. There is a sea change in the degree of risk and uncertainty in international business, which is driven primarily by the environmental forces. The business managers must be able to scan the opportunities, identify the threats posed by the environment and make a way for their success. It is not worthy that there are several tools and techniques for analyzing the environment and the student is advised to refer to the standard textbooks for the same. Thank you.